What's up everyone? My name is Dean Chessman and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this particle simulation using the Connect and Touch Designer. Let's get started. So first thing we need is a Connect. So the Connect, uh, the Connect version 2 uh, with the, um, the PC adapter. So I think um, I actually just bought another one recently for a project I'm working on that's going to have multiple connects and it was about I think $70 for the connect and the adapter on Amazon. I'm sure you could probably find them way cheaper on eBay or like Facebook Marketplace or something. Uh, but the main part of the connect top we're going to use today is going to be uh, inside the image output we're going to take the color point cloud. So the color point the color cloud um, is going to take my my normal image so um let me show what that normal image looks like actually so if i take the what the color output is from the camera you see it, it kind of restarts every time i change it so here's my regular color camera and here's the depth map of what's happening um calculated by um calculated by what the connect thinks the depth or the position of each pixel in the space is so it thinks, you know, if I zoomed way in that this little pixel right there is at that R, G, and B location, right? So um, let's uh, let's take that a step further. So if I bring this into a null, activate it, right click and hit view as points, you can actually see um, what I'm talking about here. So all the pixels each uh, get plotted in 3D space. If I do this view as points, and you can see right in front is me down here. Um, and that shadow behind me is because the camera doesn't see any pixels behind me, right? So, um, so I get a full image worth of 3D points. So, okay, uh, we're actually going to to render these points uh, using an instancing network, kind of like all of our other particle uh, projects that we do. <clears throat> uh, first of all, since I'm working on I'm working on this Windows machine. Uh, because uh, that's also another limitation of the Connect is that it only works on Windows uh, in Touch Designer. So um, my Windows machine is a little bit older, so I'm going to drop my resolution down on this using a, a resolution top. Uh, I'm going to do let's just do half. I think that'll probably be fine. Okay, so let's uh, let's start plotting these points so I can I can see what's happening to them as I change things going forward. So this null I'm going to rename to positions. And I'm going to make my kind of standard um, instancing network, this time with a box. So I'm going to bring in a box stop. I'm going to make the size 0.003. I know that from just practicing. Um, okay, got my box. I'm going to drag that into a geometry. I'm going to grab a camera. Um, I'm going to start out just with the constant material for now. And then a render. And let's do um, let's do it in vertical mode here. So 1080 by 1920. And then let's start our instancing. So turn instancing on, pull my positions in, and set them with RGB. Okay, so I've got my rendering happening. And if I go into my camera, activate it, and I zoom around, I see my camera started out on the back side of things. So I actually want it more on the front side here. And I'm going to zoom around. So I'm, you know, I'm uh, rotated 360 degrees. I'm going to go 180. Let's just put these around here. So let's start with like a negative 1.5. Okay. So what does that look like in my render? Let's drag this out to an out. And then uh, I'm going to right click and hit view so I can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but also so you can move things around. Just my image here. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's zoom in a little more, maybe on the camera. Okay. So I've got my my little floating guy here, but I've got this little shadow coming in around me on this on this. Uh, but and I, for what I'm going to make here, I'm going to, I want to filter all these out, right? Like I just want me kind of by myself. <clears throat> and so what's the best way to filter those extra pixels out? So what we can do is if I bring in a threshold and I say, um, you know, give me things within, 
greater than one point, or let's see, 0 0.8 maybe, I think it's, let's bring it down more maybe. Okay. Um, oh, this is why. Okay, so I forgot the one big thing. So I was just changing the luminance of the entire image, but instead of just luminance, I want to change to the blue channel. And the blue channel is my depth from the camera. So it's kind of my Z space. So if I bring it up, I think this is uh, measured in meters. So I'm, you know, a little about a little, a little less than a meter away from my camera. So maybe if I even set it at one, so this will give me just the pixels from this if I multiply it together. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply. Okay, so it's going to crop out crop out the pixels that I want. And uh, you'll see now if I look at my my original kind of null there or my render itself. It's just me kind of floating in space. All right. Uh, what else? Let's uh, let's put some a color on this on these particles. So uh, because instancing you need to have the exact same amount of pixels, I'm going to copy this resolution and bring in my color or my, my color input from my camera. And then um, I'm going to add a null, Oops, a notch. And then change that to color. And then in my instancing, the second tab, I'm going to bring that into the color. An RGB value. So now I've got colors attached to all those little pixels. Um, so if we zoom in real far. Yeah, we can see these are actually all little boxes floating around with the, the color assigned based on the camera image. Okay, so the regular color of uh, the regular color from my my image is not that interesting. I'm going to move this up just a tiny bit. So frame. Not the most flattering, but uh, let's go with it. <clears throat> all right, so let's uh, let's make this look a little more interesting. I'm actually going to take all of these. Pull them way out here because I know I'm going to need a few more things. Okay, so first of all, let's add some color. So let's do that with a lookup. And from the lookup, I'm going to do a ramp. And I want to pick some sort of just, you know, uh, some colors. Let's do some blues. Let's uh, add like a pop. You know, something brighter in there. Let's get that in. Um, I'm going to take this black out. Let's turn it into something else. Maybe, maybe I'll move this All right. Um, and you'll see here, this right now, right away, it's like really kind of solarized, crazy looking. And I know too, I'm going to, in this ramp, I'm going to go ahead and change the phase. So let's do abs time dot seconds over six. Maybe even a little slower than that. Okay, so that's kind of cool, but um, maybe I don't want it so psychedelic looking. I could just add another ramp in between here. And what that's going to do is going to multiply by just a black to white ramp so that my dark sections of my image still stay dark and the light images stay light, but they pick up the color. So I'm going to drop this in. Let's see what we've got here. What we've got here. It's showing up in color now. Okay, what else can we do? Um, another thing I want to do is start changing the actual actual pixel locations inside of these uh, this, this 3D pixel location map here, the point cloud. So the way I'm going to do that, um, let's see, let's drag these over. Well, no, let's keep that there. Um, we're going to drag this into a noise. So into the noise in the first and second inputs because we're going to be using the values of the points themselves to look up the noise values that we want to use. So, uh, and I only care about the output being the noise because I'm going to add it on my own. This is a good reminder too that I want, I don't want it to be monochrome. I want it to go in all directions. Um, don't want it to just be uh, you know, red, green, and blue all the same because uh, I want to randomize X, Y, and Z for each point. <clears throat> okay, the amplitude, I know it's going to be way high, but I'm going to maybe leave it for a second. I'll come back and adjust that later. And then I don't want this to like, you know, 
if I add this right now, it's going to just be crazy because I'm adding noise everywhere. And if I, even if I bring the amplitude way down, um, I've just lost it all. So, oh, it's because I'm only uploading noise. You know, if I do input plus noise. So, I mean, you can kind of see something going on there, but uh, I want to only affect part of the image that way. So I'm going to use a ramp to, uh, a ramp to kind of slice sections out of this that I'm going to use to uh, change the particle. So I'm going to create the ramp by itself here first so I can see what it's doing. I'm going to change it to vertical. Let's do the period. I'm going to do 0.2. And then uh, instead of repeat, I want to mirror because I want to ramp up and down. <clears throat> and then ease and ease out just to smooth it. And then let's animate this. So let's do apps time of seconds over six. And I know too, so this is going to, you know, be pushing that sort of noisiness through my particle system. And uh, I want to have, you know, I want to still be able to like recognize, you know, whoever's being picked up on the camera. So I'm going to make my, my gaps in between a, a bit thicker. So I'm going to pull a black, uh, a black handle in here and you know make it so that it's squeezing down what section is going to actually multiply times my noise here to to create my effect so let's go ahead and connect it that seems good for me now so i'm going to connect this in make sure my output is uh multiply and then um since this is just oh let's move back to just my noise data so th so this is just the noise data i'm going to add this now to my original um point data Okay, cool. And you'll see it's uh, kind of moving up and through. I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit here. Okay, so you can really see that effect. And uh, let's tweak those, uh, those parameters a little bit. So um, I want it to be a little more random, so I'm going to bring my, my period down. And let's bring the amplitude to sit down too, so it's not affecting it quite as much. Cool. All right, so now we've got this effect moving through. Um, what else can we do? Let's go ahead and add some post-processing effects to this to make it a little more, uh, a little more dynamic. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to create a null, just in case. I think I'm going to do some some color correction before this is, this step. So uh, let's add a feedback. I'm going to put that into a transform. um and then into a level so the transform is going to do a, a zoom out and the levels is going to do a fade out and let's do i want the input to always be there so i'm going to do an over and then drag my level into the second and then drag that into the feedback so it's not doing any quite yet because i need to adjust my parameter so i'm going to scale up by 0.01.01 cool and then so it's not so streaky psychedelic all the time, I'm also going to uh, fade out the opacity. So I'm going to be somewhat aggressive on that. And then let's try kind of using a, let's use a transform after our feedback loop to put it on a background. So let's change the alpha, let's comp it over the background image and let's give it like a little bit of color here. Let's see what it is. Oh, that is okay. So, cool. So I've got like, you know, all my images I back up, I, I like lose myself out of the detection. So I'm sort of this floating head. So let's do something else. Let's make, uh, let's make our camera dynamic. So, you know, this is kind of straight on. This is what we see out of the camera, but because we're, we're, we're creating things in 3D here. I can fly around uh, this geometry and fly in and out to make something a little more interesting. So it's like I have a virtual camera flying around. Um, let's do that by is that a null? Oh, not a, a null comp. Sorry, not a null top. So a null comp will allow me to. Um, one, I can set a camera so it'll look at this null and doesn't like we've got sort of extra parameters in here. 
Uh, in fact, I'm going to add the camera for a new, just so it's like a fresh, taking all my, my preferences out of here. Um, so okay, go ahead and get my, my null looking at that. I know um, what, what I just did there. Sorry, I didn't explain that. So if I have a null, I can parent uh, things to that null. So like my camera is sitting, you know, at, at zero, zero, 005, uh, but instead of it being relative to the world, it can be relative to this null. So then if I start rotating this null around, uh, my, uh, my camera gets swung around as well. I don't know if you can really see that that well here. Let's, let's move this, this in a little bit so we're not as far away. So now I'm only one away from my null, but if I, and if I rotate around, I'm rotating that, uh, my camera around this null object. Um, Okay, and then currently my null is at zero, 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 but I, if I look at my um, my point cloud, I can see, oh, I'm sitting more like um, around a point eight. So let's move that null to be on the Z axis, 0 0.8. And now if I rotate my null around, it's kind of keeping that in the center, right? <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's animate this on its own. So I'm gonna use an LFO to do the rotation. I'm going to do, let's see, I'll do about a 45 degree rotation. We want it to take you know, a little bit of time to do, um, sorry, not frequency. So one over eight, so frequency is like every eight seconds I want it to spin back and forth. Uh, let's put that in the rotation there. Let's see, and I think this is on the back side. So I want to add, let's, let's add, um, let's do it as a reference. Add a, about 182 it's that way it's it's staying in front okay and then let's do a similar thing uh with the distance from the camera so it's kind of moving in and out um let's call this z and then time slice it and let's have it be offset at one no let's see let's see let's offset it at two and then have an amplitude of like one and a half and the period, I'm gonna make it higher. Let's drag that onto our camera and put it in our Z position. Okay, maybe that's too far away. Let's do offset one and maybe 0.8. I might get too close. But let's try that for now. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can add to this. So because we're actually making 3D particles, you could make, you know, a, a light that even moves around in the scene and affects shadows and affects the coloring of this. Uh, other things you could do, you know, obviously we can add more post-processing sort of changes in movement, maybe do some like, you know, motion tracking. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave it at this. And, oh, I know what I'm going to do. So there's a, if you notice, every once in a while when I fly by, there's kind of these extra particles floating around. So I can see them here. That is this little line of particles right near the origin. And I want to get rid of those. So the reason those are showing up is because in my, in my noise here, I'm, uh, I'm generating a little bit of noise off of these zero, zero, zero points coming in. And I, I just want to crop those out. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select my, my threshold from the beginning here. Oh, select tab. And I'm going to multiply it again here. Uh, just to make sure it's the same pixels that I'm, that I'm cropping out. So now, now, when I look here, there's not those those same uh, that same line of extra particles hanging around. They won't show up in my render. Cool. So I think I'll leave it that kind of a simple short one, um, kind of a fun one using a, a point cloud from Connect. And uh, there's other devices I think that have this sort of thing. Um, if you have a, a Z camera, or I think. I think the Oak D might have this. I just got one. I'm going to start playing around with it. Um, and I'm hoping to maybe do some tutorials with that as well. 
If you uh, liked this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, if you want this project file that I just created here, uh, I do share those project files with my Patreon supporters. You can see the link for down. Uh, you can see the link for my Patreon down at the bottom. Also, uh, I am a freelance test designer developer. So if you have a project that you're building, you know, with connects or sensors or whatever, and you might want some help, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to chat with you to see if I'm a fit to help you out with your project. And so that'll be it. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you at the next one.